If I said to you, Joe Hasbro's magnum opus, or <laughs> Joe Hasbro's Hasbrum Jopus, look, I just had a fucking stroke. What would you immediately assume I'm talking about? Haslab Unicron? No one's gonna think that. One of the masterpiece figures, because I've got one clear example. What's the one thing that Joe Hasbro has done without any major fault? exceedingly well to the point that I don't think anyone has any complaints. It's the commander class, obviously. For anyone who doesn't know and you've been living under a rock, the commander class came out with Siege and we got our first release, which was Siege Jetfire. Obviously, Siege Jetfire came out in Siege. Somewhat scale accurate, very faithful rendition. He was very on brand. He was packed with play features and he was fun and he was just a big boy. And everyone assumed, right, well, that's what commander class is. No, it's more than that. Fast forward the next year, what do we get? Skylinks big old fucking bird and a dragon, a lynx in the sky as it were. 2021 Kingdom, it's Rodimus. And with Rodimus we had a change of pace. We had a leader with a higher budget. As a leader class toy, Rodimus is the best one we've ever had. And I know people are going to disagree with me and I don't care. You include the trailer and it becomes the question of, well that's why he's a commander because he's got the big fucking box. In. And we got another guy with a box, but this one's different. Motormaster. I just realised you can very faintly hear the washing machine in the background. I apologise. Yeah, so anyway, Menasaur was in the figure and he was the trailer and he did the thing where he just wore the cars and it brings us to the height of the magnum opus. Anything after this could just be fucking terrible. Armada Optimus Prime. We finally got something that people have asked for and it's weird because Joe Asbro isn't known for normally, you know, doing as he's fucking told. You're probably wondering why I gave you the quick recap because I want to catch you up as to why the Commander class has never failed. Now, at the time of my recording this, SS86 Ultra Magnus isn't out. He looks cool. Does he look necessary? I don't know. We also have the repaint of Jetfire for Shattered Glass. He's fine. That's, That's probably, probably the, the best, best I can I say, say about it. Now, the main thing I want to get off my chest thinking about the Commander class is that conceptually and in practice, this is the modern equivalent of the 2000s leader class figures. And but sheep, we still have leader class figures. It's a valid point, but hear me out. The way I sort of see modern leaders now is it's it, they can be Voyager scaled with extra accessories. They can be a bit bigger. Fundamentally, I think modern leader class figures are more like ultra class. And whereas leader class has gradually gotten smaller and smaller, even though it's getting more and more expensive and they've shifted priorities the commander classes then come in and it kind of carries on that tradition where in place of lights and sounds we still get extra paint apps extra accessories Fuck. rodimus is the first figure i've ever seen in mainline to have an individually articulated pointer finger i find it crazy just how much they actually pack into these commander class releases because they always feel like something it was overdue like okay so jet fire and scale yes needed that skylink the one we'd had was combiner wars now rodimus i think is a bit of a contentious one because i'm sure people would have said i'd rather have had something else in the commander spot but here's the thing that rodimus is so much better than the Galvatron and the Optimus he was released alongside to the point it makes me wish they did Commander Class Optimus that wasn't Armada. And it's like Mortmaster, as I already said, Combiner Wars. How about we actually get something worth putting on display? And then Optimus. Optimus is the best version of that figure we've ever had. The best version of that design because not only does he have the articulation like the original Deluxe, he also has the Super Mode and he doesn't forego the functionality because oh yeah, here's a really cool gimmick that'll That'll just burn the house right the fuck down. That was more a joke for the people in my Discord who never shut the fuck up about that story. I'm not sorry. I can't think of any other release that everyone is continuously excited for every year. Because it's just gone from strength to strength. That's why I said at the start, I think they've peaked. Because now I'm concerned. Where, Where the, the fuck do we go from here? Who's, Who's the next, next commander going to be? Actually, I need to do a quick transition here. Star Saber. Star Saber was a Haslab release. But he very much embodies the spirit of commander class. He's basically like a commander with a leader. I think he's honorarily a commander class. And I'm sure Death Saurus is going to be the same. With the commanders, I, I can't think of any other line which consistently has people unconditionally excited to see what it does. And I don't think that's just down to are oh, they make all the correct choices i think part of that is also down to the quality of the individual figures you know it feels like commander gets better qc treatment comparatively there never seems to be as much going wrong and i think it's more ambitious than what 
Titan class has proven to be. And it has the ability to be more ambitious than everything else before it. I don't think there was really much I wanted to say that was controversial. You know, or probably not much that was worth taking up. Seven minutes of your time. But it was more just I wanted to post this love letter tribute to... One of my honestly favourite experiences of the last five years, Commander Class just continues to go from strength to strength. And as the figures themselves have gotten to be less just a big boy and have gotten more into smaller territories, it continues to use the budget to its strengths. It's a shame the prices are going up, but the price of everything's going up. Fuck it, that's the world we live in now. I think if I was ever to recommend people to just buy one figure from each line, I think consistently I would say the Commander class, because consistently, they're always good. They're always fantastic, well-detailed, well-articulated. Just a joy. Just an outright fucking joy. You probably saw quite a lot of Armada Prime in this video. That's because I really fucking like Armada Prime. As someone who grew up on the Unicron trilogy and as someone who likes good figures, he's not perfect, but he's as probably as fucking close as we're gonna get. And it's one of the few times that I look Joe Hasbro dead in the eye and say, you know what? I respect you. I don't know why I sounded like I was about to cry when I said that. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that I'm overblowing Commander Class? Do you guys think that I'm underrating Commander Class? Do you guys agree, disagree? Why don't you let me know? Why don't you tell me why I'm wrong? Why don't you tell me why I'm cringe? You do you. Armada Prime is a must-have. Have you got one yet? Because if you haven't, you could be in for a chance to win a legacy Armada Prime of your own. Yeah, I bought two. One for the express purpose of giving, giving it away. If you just follow the link below, you'll be able to join in and take part. And I think that'll wrap up this video. Have a good one. And if you're entering, good luck with the giveaway.